Selena, and I'm here with Susie Ormond. How are you doing? You know what? I'm fabulous. Thank you, sweetheart. Yes, this is great. And I remember I interviewed you in Orlando, and you wouldn't let me have any cards, and I don't have any cards now. So this is like there, perfect. There you go. There. <laughs> I know, yes. So you're everyone's financial expert, but what have you been doing recently? Well, you know, about a year ago. Yeah. I shut down the Susie Orman show, I stopped writing for O Magazine, I stopped everything because I'm 65 now and there comes a time in your life where it's what are you when you're not defined by everything that you do. So I'm finding out who I am now without being an author, a TV personality and so on and so forth and just being Susie. So we're spending, I'm learning how to fish right now, that's my new thing. So we're here at Broadway Sings for Pride, what is, what are you excited for tonight? You know there's so many things things I'm excited for, but being gay, being a lesbian my entire life, being always proud that I was a lesbian my entire life, and as a second ago I said I was 65, so way back when it wasn't like it is now, where it's still not easy, but it wasn't like in the 60s and the 50s. I like that, that I can be part of anything that's gay. Yeah. I like that. And it seems to me there's never been a more important time given what's just happened in Orlando right. and so forth to be able to make a statement of yeah. some kind. Yeah. And so the gay family is my family. So when I can, I always show up for them. And yeah. that I'm most excited about. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And actually, I interviewed you in Orlando the last time we were together. When you heard about the Orlando shootings and everything, what was your initial uh, reaction? Well, there's no other way to react except being sad. Right. But it's a reality. It's not just that it was a gay nightclub. It can be students in a school that are five years old. It can be going to a theater. It can be going anywhere. So it's, it's a reality of life today. And it's just, there's nothing other to say than it's just sad. Hey guys, I am here with Eric Anthony Lopez and you were just in London. Okay, so one of my favorite Broadway shows, Phantom of the Opera, tell me about this. Ooh. So I just got back Tuesday and we're now here Monday doing Phantom. I was there for about seven months doing the show there. I covered a bunch of tracks, it was amazing. And uh, I had to make it back for Broadway Six for Pride because uh, and you know, they, I thought I was gonna sing like legit music, like very like oh, but they had me singing straight up pop today, Britney Spears actually. Oh so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. Now you are only 21. Okay, how how did you get involved into you know Phantom on Broadway in London? Like, tell me about your whole journey with that. It's crazy. I was uh, at Manhattanville College studying special education, and I saw a breakdown for an off-Broadway show, the Jackie Mason musical, and uh, I. Just just went out for it and it just worked out stars aligned and I was doing that show I was there for a year an off-Broadway debut 19 moved here with a job it was nice and then I immediately left to go to Phantom so it was amazing now what are your plans after this so you know Broadway sings for pride when then where are you going yes I'm actually gonna be in Tokyo I'm gonna be doing a Can I be you? I wanna go yeah. to all these places. Come with me. Yeah. Okay. We're going to Tokyo. Well, I'm going to Tokyo. You should come with me. A Christmas show. Uh, what is it called? Christmas Wonderland. Wow. And it's about uh, just a normal Christmas show like you would see here in the city, uh, Christmas Spectacular. So uh, I'm one of the lead four singers. We have four singers who are like the kind of anchors, and then the Japanese company surrounds us. It's gonna be at Tokyo Theater Orb and uh, from November to January. So. For all of you guys in Tokyo, that's amazing. All of you guys in Tokyo, come see a holiday show. Hey guys, I am here with Anissa. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm so excited to be here. Okay, so tell me about your style, what people can expect. You no, know, my my sound is very classic, timeless, you know, um, a lot of acoustic instruments, live performance, etc. And me as an artist, I just want to bring back like the classic yes. style. Okay. I feel like that's something that's kind of missing in pop music. So I want to bring back the classic to pop. That's going to be so fun. Now, what are you performing here tonight? Oh, tonight I'm performing one of my covers, Take Me to Church, on that I have on YouTube. And I'm also performing my uh, first single. That's not even out yet, but I'm excited to perform it. Yes. Yeah. So we get like a sneak peek then. Oh my god, that's going to be great. Now, where can people find that first single, everything? Yeah, totally. Um, if you search up Anissa on Instagram, Anissa on Facebook, Anissa on YouTube, you'll find my YouTube channel, you find my Instagram and all that stuff. And all my like music when I come out with my, my single and all my YouTube videos, everything will be on there. So just 
E N I S A, Anisa. Hey everyone, I am here with Jeffrey Marsh, who is a famous viner. How are you doing? Hi, it's so wonderful to meet you. Thank you. I love like your whole style. You were like I so love amazing. Your life. I love your life right now. Thank you. I know it's a lot of fun. G, &G glasses. Mm -hmm. That is style. Thank you. I have like I have a thing for my my glasses. Like I, it's a, it's amazing. So tell me about your vines. Like this is amazing. Well, I always have positive messaging, which fits right into tonight. We want everyone to be proud of who they are feel good about who they are, know that there's nothing wrong with them. That's the main thing I do. Just tell people that over and over in six second clips. That's perfect. That's like perfect timing too. So, you know, what brings you here to Broadway Sings for Pride? Especially in the wake of what's happened recently, it is so important. You know, I was getting a little upset at the Catholic Church earlier today because pride is listed as a deadly sin. I would like for it to be taken off the list because it's necessary. It's important to feel good about who you are deep down. And I wanted to support that. And I knew of no better way than to sing and be happy, which is what tonight's about. I know, that's gonna be great. Now, after uh, Broadway Sings for Pride, what are, some, like, what are some things that you're gonna do to try to get the sin off that list? <laughs> to get, oh, that sin off that list? Well, I'm going to keep making vines. I have a book coming out in August with Penguin Random House. It's called How to Be You. And it teaches people to love and accept who they are. That's amazing. Now, where can people find your book? And what's your vine, you know, vine name and everything? Oh, yes. Look, go on to Vine and type in Jeffrey Marsh. And actually, I'm very proud. If you Google beard eyeshadow, Vine. You pop up? Oh That's God. me. <laughs> That's perfect. I am here with Henry Krieger. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What brings you here to Broadway Sings for Pride? Well, I am proud of all the gay people that are celebrating Gay Pride Week. And I was asked to perform, and I am doing it. I'm liking it. What are you performing? I'm performing... Um, a song from my show Dream Girls and a couple of other different songs, some of some of them from a new show. And um, I'm accompanying two fabulous women, French She Davis and Kiala Settle. Yeah. And so it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Now you won a Grammy. Tell me about what your Grammy was for. Grammys. You won two Grammys. Oh yeah, even better. Okay, tell me about those. One was for the album of the Broadway Dream Girls, and another was for the best song from a film, which is Love You I Do from the movie of Dream Girls. Hey everyone, I am here with John Paul Almond and Javier and Ignacio. How are you guys doing? Great, great. So happy to be here. Yes, thank great. you. Great. Great. Really thrilled. Thank you. I know. So, what brings you here to Broadway Sings for Pride? Well, um, this, this is actually my first Broadway Sings for Pride event. Um, I was invited uh, by Neil, and uh, we're, we're actually in a, in a number together we're performing tonight. Yes, oh my gosh, tell me about that number. Well, we're doing a number that's actually from Dream Girls, but both of us did the production of Sideshow. I did the first production of Sideshow, and he just did the uh, new production that was on Broadway this uh, past season. So the writer of that is doing a number tonight, and uh, actually we're doing a number from Dream Girls. Yeah. Oh my gosh, okay, so what has been like the difference between the first Sideshow and the second? A lot of things changed. I mean, uh, a lot of the direction, there were new characters. Um, but uh, what's interesting is that, that the, the show itself uh, has brought, you know, we've, we're all part of the same, the same family. And it's incredible that now, you know, our paths have crossed, you know, even though we just met, but like we, we're, we, we feel in a way that, that there's something connecting us. Um, so we're really exciting. Yeah, so. That's amazing. So, um, you know, I'm from Florida. And, um, you know, everything that happened in Orlando, what was your guys' initial reaction when you first heard about it? I mean, it's terrifying. I actually spent some time living in Miami as well. I spent some uh, years in Florida, and I had a, a, a few friends in Orlando. Um, luckily, everybody was fine, but it just, um, it, it is really a horrifying event, and we're, I'm so glad that we're able to come together and support them and show them, show the world really what, um, what our community is all about, and, and it's, support, it's all about love and 
that's what's wonderful about the Broadway community, you know. Right, definitely. I just was thinking that it's it's uh, humbling to be uh, coming to something like this that you just feel is uh, a voice to be heard just so they know hearts from every community really in the United States is going out to Orlando right now. So I, I watched the, the news this morning and they just had 50,000 people at the vigil in Orlando and uh, amazing to hear parents describe why they wanted to bring their children to show that all the love there is in the world outweighs a bad thing that happened from one person. So that's the out of a, a tragedy, uh, the, the beauty of people coming together, which is really the bulk of the human race, not the, the fewer the, are the ones who did something negative. Right, definitely. That's, that's amazing. It's also beautiful to see all of the different communities coming together in support of, of this beautiful um, cause. It's this, unfortunately, this horrifying event happened, but, it, but um, it's um, beautiful to see communities coming forward and, and really stepping forward and speaking out for what's right so hey guys i'm here with trevor braun who's singing tonight how are you doing i'm good i'm pretty good Very yeah good. That's, that's amazing so you've been performing basically your whole life okay so tell me about some of the the shows that you've been in uh well when i was about seven i started working professionally and then i was in beauty and the beast the little mermaid and billy elliott all on broadway and oh my God. yeah that's crazy so what are your goals now uh, well, I'm going to college next year, so maybe concentrate on my education a little bit. I'm going to be going for acting, and then hopefully I want to continue pursuing theater, film, and just really acting and performing is, is what I love and what I'm most passionate about. So my main goal in life is just to continue doing what it is that I love doing. That's awesome. That's great. So um, you're studying acting in college, yeah. right? So after college, you want to continue being in Broadway, on Broadway and everything like that? Or? Yeah, I, I want to continue doing theater professionally, but I also hope to maybe uh, pursue film and television because actually the major I'm going into BFA acting for film television yeah. and like voiceover and commercials so I'm kind of hoping to like expand my craft and move Ooh. move into different facets of acting right. try out oh new stuff God. that's gonna be amazing now what is your favorite part about Broadway Sings for Pride oh well I love the way people come together it's really community oriented yeah. it's a lot of fun everyone's here to support each other and we're just here to have a good time and sort of show support hey everyone I am here with Brock Torelli, yeah. right? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing quite well. And yourself? Good. I'm very good. Thank you. So you're from the, uh, the middle, yeah. right? Tell me about how that's been. Uh, the middle's great. We're going into our eighth season in August. Uh, lots of fun stuff happening. Um, Sue and Brad are working at Dollywood this summer, so I'm assuming we'll see a little glimpse of that when we go back to work. But um, yeah. very lucky, very fortunate that you know we've been on this long and we're still going. And I think that's just a testament to the writers of yeah. how good they are and all the new storylines they can create. That's crazy. That's, that's amazing. I was heard you here and I was like, that's, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> so what brings you to uh, Broadway Sings for Pride? Like, what's your favorite part about this event? I mean, I think the person we're honoring tonight, her name's Ruth, um, and she, I, I had just learned about her this past couple weeks when Neil asked me to be here, but I think um, a woman like her are, are, is the kind of person we need more in the, more in the world of. Uh, you know, she, she did something that was unpopular in a time where we needed it the most. And people like that who are willing to, you know, blaze a trail and who are willing to uh, go against the grain are the people who make changes in this world. And so it's people like Ruth who um, are making effective differences. And I'm so proud to be here honoring her tonight. That's amazing. That's Thank great. You. So I'm actually from Florida. Um, nice. I live in the city now. But everything that happened in Orlando. So yeah. what? What was your like initial reaction when you first heard about it? Like everything. I was heartbroken. I woke up to, in the middle of the night. My phone was ringing like crazy, and I was in Los Angeles. So I was three hours earlier too. So in the middle of the night. Um, I, but just, I mean, it's tragic that fear and hate are the things that drive such violent and horrific acts. But what I love about events like this and what I feel like the majority of the spirit of this nation is, mm -hmm. is that we're going we're, we're gonna to rise above this right. and that we are so much better than this and that while, although we have these minor setbacks here and there, um, we're, we're, on the, we're on the path to making a difference. And I think events like this are really making a difference and helping us move forward. And I think happy events, you know, where we're showing our pride and where um, we're putting support out there are hoping to um, expel any future things like Orlando because it's horrific and it's tragic. Hey everyone, I am here with Jason Stewart. How are you doing tonight? I'm so affected by your whole outfit. Oh, thank you. I know, it's, you know, it's You're exciting. Adorable. 
Yes. <laughs> so what brings you here to Broadway Sings for Pride? I'm here to support uh, gay youth in New York City. I'm a big proponent of the idea of paying it forward. And I am the comedy portion of this singing show, Broadway Sings for Pride. I think I'm the only comedian in the show, except I think there's going to be some funny singers. Okay. okay. Definitely. What is like? What is your like comedy piece going to be about and everything? It's going to be about funny. Okay. <laughs> That's the hope. Yes. Uh, I will be talking a little bit about politics, a little bit about my life, my mom. Nice. Yeah, you want me to give some stuff away, don't you? Maybe, maybe a little bit. Mm. Well, I will be talking, Bernie did lose. True. You know, and Hillary, of course, I'm a Hillary guy. I'm actually doing a benefit for her next week in Washington, D.C. And she said it takes a village to raise a child, and for a gay person, it takes the village people. <laughs> so. And so you have been in so many movies. Yes. Tell me about some of the ones that you really just enjoyed. Uh, I think the most exciting thing is being in A Birth of a Nation this year. I play a, a black, uh, it's about black abolitionist Nat Turner. I'm not black. I play a plantation owner, yeah. a white heterosexual Christian plantation owner in 1831, <laughs> type casting. And I'm a gay liberal Jew. So I think it should be really interesting. It's really exciting that I got the opportunity to be in a film about, I think, the beginning of Black Lives Matter. And the trajectory of the last three films that I did that went to Sundance were the first, Love is Strange, which is the big New York movie, with Alfred Bellini and John Lithgow, Marissa Tomei, and then I did Tangerine, the film that was done on the iPhone about the two transgender gals, A Day in the Life, and now a film, The Birth of a Nation, of uh, the black community fighting for their own rights in the 1800s. So it seems like that it's been a really cool uh, bunch of movies that I believe in, and somebody coined me the uh, Sundance luck charm, so... Good luck charm, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm actually from Orlando, um, you know, from Florida. Uh, yeah, and yeah. right next to Orlando, actually. Yeah. So uh, when I heard about it, you know, definitely was close to home for me. So what was your initial reaction when you first heard about it and like... Deep, deep sadness. Uh, the idea that it happened the day of Gay Pride in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. where I live. Right. I actually canceled uh, a couple of the interviews that I was doing. I just didn't leave the house. I was so upset. And uh, the idea that religion has caused so much pain in our world and society by so many people. The idea that people have taken what we do in this country and uh, used religion and, and difference to, to murder people, 49 people, I mean, yeah. the biggest shooting ever. And the idea that they still are not laws, for, people can get these kind of assault, you know, semi-assault rifles that shoot 40, 50 rounds at once is completely insane because I don't think our forefathers meant for that to happen. Yeah. I really don't. Definitely not. I don't think it was comprehensible for them to even think that this would happen. Hey guys, I am here with Mr. United States, Avery. How are you doing tonight? I'm wonderful, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. You were recently crowned, right? Tell me about your whole experience. Oh wow, well first and foremost, um, the Mr. United States organization is very, very new. We just completed our first year and uh, so excited about the opportunity to really recruit other outstanding men. Um, the organization is really built around mentorship and about literally giving opportunity for guys to be able to put some quality work in their communities to kind of make a social difference. So the the crowning moment was awesome because it's um, it's great to represent my home state of Louisiana, um, but literally just to kind of be able to really be a national ambassador now for an amazing positive message is something that I can't, you know, I, I don't take for granted. Like you said, you have a very positive message. Absolutely. Tell me about your message and what you're trying to spread across the country. Sure. Uh, my platform is called Love Matters, yes. and it's L-O-V-E, -E, Living Optimistic Values Every Day. Our goal is really to kind of just empower the world and inspire people to know that there's these three pillars to operate from, loving for self a love for others and a love for something greater. It just kind of taps you into this consciousness and knowing that it's something that you really can sow more and that, you know, hopefully we can, you know, we'll see a different shift in terms of behavioral um, actions with people in terms of reaping all of what they're sowing. Yeah, definitely. Now, we are here at uh, Broadway Sings for Pride. What is your favorite uh, thing about this event? Oh, wow. Believe it or not, it, it's going to sound cliche, but it really is the love. I think that, you know, this community, these two communities particularly, have a very um, unknown presence globally for just being the most open-minded and the most compassionate and empathetic people on the planet. And the truth is, you can feel that palpably when you walk in the door. So I just, I, I, it's something that I, about the love that it just kind of pulls you in and you can just, you, you really feel it. Hey, everyone. I am here at Broadway Sings for Pride. I'm here with my good friend Dalton. How are you doing? I'm, do oh, I'm, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. So you're going to be one of the speakers tonight. Tell me about what you're speaking about, everything. 
So I was a gay basketball player who was outed in Kentucky and went through some obstacles and I'm going to talk more about that tonight. You go to which school and then you're playing basketball for them, right? Um, I go to the University of Louisville, but I'm actually thinking about transferring in August to start playing basketball. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh my gosh. So just tell me about like your whole story. Like, did it start off in high school and then how did, how did all that happen? Um, it actually started when I was about in the eighth grade. I was raped and molested by a preacher. It really set me back, and then I finally confronted the situation, and he ended up going to jail. A few years later, I was outed at a basketball game, um, and I thought about saying like it wasn't true. But then like I finally just stood up to my team, and I was like, "Guys, I'm gay. Like I'm sorry." Like, and I sat down, and started crying. My whole team came around me. But to our surprise, the other team was sitting outside screaming, let the faggot off the bus. They chased our bus saying, we know where you all live. We ended up going back to my school and the school said, oh, none of it's true, none of this happened after the article came out. Then my school ended up leaving me out of the basketball section of my yearbook. And it was like, they was like, oh, it was a mistake, we didn't mean it. And it was just like, I was the starting point guard, like, how are you all going to like leave me out and then like but I found support in like two men that have really like became my dad's like when I had nobody like they picked me up so like to have something like this to find support for LGBTQ youth is just amazing. And, like if there's any you know young kids out there that have similar stories to you what would you tell them? Um, just keep living your truth like if you do it for the right reasons and you're just being yourself like that's all that matters at the end of the day like it may seem rough in the moment, but there is support groups and there will be people out there that can help you. So just keep doing you and just know that there is people out there. And if they need someone, I would be there for them. That's amazing. Thank you so much and good luck with your speech tonight. Thank you, girl. Oh. Now it's my turn to interview you, though. Oh, you want to interview me? Okay. So here you go. Yes. Hello. We're here live. Don't really know where we are, but we're starting this interview. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Dalton. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. This is my first ever talk show, even though this isn't my talk show. It's very exciting. I feel so cool holding this mic. I feel like one of the performers tonight. <laughs> I can't do it no more. I just keep going. Hey, guys. I am here with Sam Champion from... Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Very good. Okay, so you have a show on the Weather Channel. On the Weather Channel, 23.5. Yeah. Uh, it is actually about the tilt of the Earth's axis. It's at uh, 40,000 year average of about 23.5 degrees, and that makes it that we can live on the Earth. We have seasons. We're not being hit by the sun and baked, you know, at a constant state. So that's the reason we called the show. The show's a long-form interview about climate, environment, weather, science, technology. That is so cool. I was wondering what 23.5 meant. I was like, what is that? I just thought I'd tell you. I thought I'd tell you. That's perfect. What got you into having this kind of a show? Because it's a very unique show. Well, I'm kind of a weather geek and, and weather freak and science freak and have been all of my life. And I just think that now um, there's a lot of topics that are covered in mainstream media. And I've worked with the networks for more than 30 years. But they don't talk about these topics. They talk about celebrity. They talk about, um, uh, you know, movies and theater and things like that, but they don't talk about our topics. If we're science people, we want to talk about them. So that's why we made the show. Yeah, and I was actually watching one of the episodes. Um, and it, I love that you've seen the show. I know. I You're watched a little weather geek, aren't you? A Come little on, bit. A awesome. little bit. Come on, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And you guys were talking about Mars and how there was like new rovers up there, yeah. um, like the size of like Mini Coopers or something. It was so cool. I was like, what is this? We will talk to the scientists who are actually making plans and working in the fields that you want to know about. So no longer will you have questions about it. These people will tell you, like like JPL Labs, um, they'll say, hey, look, this, this is our plan. We want to be in Mars at X years. We're building this and we're going to put it there. It's an awesome show. I know, it's so cool. I was just like, oh my gosh, my inner geek is like coming out. This is so great. Like, I knew it, I could see it. Like It's the glasses, I know. Um, <laughs> so, okay, they were talking about different water that could be on Mars or something. They don't know if it was sweet or bitter or so, acidic. Tell me about that. One of the most amazing things, there are a lot of amazing, amazing things that have been discovered recently, but one of them is that, and it's a connection between something that was found here on Earth and how we think there might be life on other planets. So on Earth, we found that uh, bacterial life will live in our, uh, Antarctic sea ice, even a mile 
plus deep. So we never thought anything lived in ice before, but if bacteria and the things that live around bacteria and live on bacteria can actually live in ice, well we know planets that have got ice, like Mars. So could there be bacterial life on Mars in that ice? It's kind of an amazing discussion. Right. What do you think? Do you think there could be other life forms? I think there has to be. Um, because we started looking for planets that could support life by looking for planets that might have water. Waters is, it's everything to life, like it's the basic building block. So if you have ice, you had water. You know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. So where can people <laughs> check out your show for all of us nerds out there? Well, where you can find us on Facebook at 23.5. You can find us on Twitter. Um, you can always, you know, find me. I'll put you there. I'm at Sam Champion on Twitter, at Sam Champion on Facebook. Um, and the show is on the Weather Channel at 11, 11 o'clock on Tuesday nights every week. And then we replay it uh, Sunday at 12.30 in the afternoon.